I am a BSA graduate. Uh, talking about my experience, I started working with uh, Sybase Software Private Limited. It's in Pune. I started uh, there in April 2015, and I worked with Sybase till July 2021. And after that, I started working with all scripts from August 2021 till date. Uh, this is my experience. When I joined Sybase, I started working as a service desk executive. Uh, initially, I was working on very uh, basic issues and gradually I, I grew there. So I started working as a service desk analyst and then I started working in, after six or seven months, I got an opportunity to apply for an IGP and I started working as a Windows admin. And I worked for a long time as a Windows admin, Windows and VM admin. So I do have a good experience on infrastructure also. Uh, luckily, the same client with, for which I was working as a Windows administrator, they wanted to move their infrastructure from uh, on-prem to cloud and that cloud happened to be Azure. And fortunately, my manager, my client, they believed in me. They did not ask me to change my project, but they asked me to enhance my skills. So did I. I, I pursued the Azure uh, certification that time and I started working with the same project, however, on a different role as an Azure administrator. Initially, I was uh, responsible for very uh, least important tasks, for example, resizing the machine, increasing the disk, uh, putting machine into maintenance mode. That's how it started. And later on, I became a part of implementation team where we used to implement the resources. We, we had an architect team and we used to get a low level diagram from them and we used to implement the, uh, the resources. In same work profile I have here in all script also. When we get the detailed designing from them and then we implement resources, it could be anything. Uh, it could be from scratch. Most of the time I have seen a uh, client having footprint already on cloud, but it could be from scratch also like uh, uh, Azure Active Directory, subscriptions, accesses, resource group, VNet, NAZ, VPN, firewall policies, monitoring, uh, even load balancer if that is uh, required. So this is what I have been doing and this is about my experience. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so I believe that you might have gone through the job description what we're looking for and uh, what expertise uh, we are more of a, uh, taking under the consideration. So uh, let's start with the technical. Are you aware of uh, um, availability options uh, for virtual machine? Yes, I am. So, so we, we have, have uh, availability zone, zone. We have availability set, set and uh, we have uh, DR. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, not exactly an availability uh, option, but yes, yes we, we can, can consider, consider that. that. So, so in availability, availability set, how it works, if, if I have uh, an application for which I want redundancy, I can go ahead and select avail availability zone. In availability zone, they will divide the same data center into different fault domain and uh, update domains and different racks will have different power supply, different ISP. So if something happens to within that data center, I will still have another machine on which my application can run. But if something happens to that whole data center, then availability zone, uh, uh, availability set is not useful for me. If I am looking for a redundancy where if something happens to a whole data center, then also I should have my application up and running, then I can go for availability zone. But when it comes to availability zone, availability zone is not available in all the regions. There are a few regions where we have, I mean, more than a few, but it's not available in all the regions. In availability zone, in one particular region, we may have three data centers, and then our servers, we can deploy on each data center. So even if something happens to that particular area of the city or of that region, I will still have my multiple servers uh, running from different uh, data centers. So that is availability zone. Okay. Uh, just a moment. Okay. So I'm um, just looking for your resume. Give me a minute. <coughs> okay. Uh, what sort of responsibilities you had as a Windows admin? As, as a Windows Cybage? Yes. As, as a, a Windows administrator, I was responsible for do uh, for day to day operations in data center. Uh, mostly, mostly virtualized because uh, obviously the client was based and data center was in the US. Uh, however, deploying a server on vCenter, even for hardware server, uh, be it uh, Dell, maximum I have worked with Dell servers, very uh, less chance I got to work with HP servers, but decommissioning server, provisioning of new server, uh, adding server to domains, removing them, DNS issues. Uh, I did not get much chance to work on Active Directory, but I do have a good understanding of applications, how it works, DNS replication, the adding DNS records, etc. Uh, if something happens to a physical server, so talking to vendors, getting the RAM replaced, uh, etc. So these were the responsibilities I used to do, and obviously patching was one of them. 
Okay. So uh, when you say patching, uh, do you have any idea about update management center in Azure? <coughs> I would like to explain a bit of it. Update, update management center in Azure. Azure. I'm, I'm familiar, familiar, but I have not worked on this. Uh, like we have ACCM in Windows or Landesk, the, the software mm -hmm. which we have, uh, through which we can do the patching in a centralized way. We can select the patches, we can push them, we can restart machine from here. We simply have to add those machines once and then we can do the patching in a centralized manner. Uh, maybe based on the category, for example, this prod machine should go, uh, should start patching on Sunday. Uh, Non-prod should uh, do on weekdays also. So all these things we can... Uh, uh, control from uh, any any patching tool. Fair enough. Now you mentioned that you worked on DNS as well. So can you explain to me what is what are conditional forwarders? Uh, conditional, conditional forwarders, forwarders let's, let's say that, that I do not, for, for some records, I do not hold the record. Uh, it, it's an outside organization. organization. Uh, uh, but, but my users, users they frequently ask for it. For it. Uh, so, so I will, I will have, have a record that anyone who is requesting for this this uh, particular domain or this particular uh, query, it it should go to this particular server, and that server will have the database of all the domains of all the A records or other records of uh, that particular domain. It will be forwarded, and then it will be resolved from that server. Yeah. And uh, uh, do you know how many? Uh, uh, DNS zones are there. Ah, we, we have forward zone, uh, request lookup zone, zone, and we have stop zone. zone. How about primary and secondary? Active Directory integrated? Integrated, integrated zone, zone, yes, we, we do have. Uh, so do you have any idea about it, what it is? Active Directory integrated zone, I mean, uh, any server, any DNS server, which I uh, install or configure on a server which already has Active Directory, that would be called Active Directory Integrated Zone. If I have a dedicated and isolated DNS server, that would be called as an Active Directory Integrated Zone. But if I am installing a DNS server on the same server where I have my domain controller, where I have my ADDS zone, it will be called as Active Directory uh, Integrated. So if I add some server to a domain, uh, a DNS record will get created automatically. Uh -huh. And what is the main advantage of having uh, Active Directory integrated zone? What is the main advantage of it? It's more, uh, you know, proactively we use Active Directory. One, 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 one is the, this one that uh, uh, records gets, gets uh, created, created automatically. Yeah, the other one, the replication, replication works with a, uh, uh, Active Directory. I mean, whenever the uh, AD sync is happening, your DNS will also get replicated. That answers my question. Perfect. Okay. Um, do you have any idea about Azure Disk Encryption? Azure Disk Encryption? Yes, I do have. Uh, normally, all the disks are encrypted, but that's based on the uh, platform encrypted key. But if, if we want our own encrypted key, if you want to encrypt a disk, so someone, uh, if someone gets access to my disk, he or she should not be able to you know, uh, use that disk, be it OSS or any disk, they should not be able to use that as a data disk in their computer. Just detach it, let's say they have exported the disk and now they are doing it on, on Azure platform to some different virtual machine. If I want to prevent that, I can use Azure disk encryption. Okay. Perfect. Uh, that 